Barbell deadlifts, barbell squats, overhead press, lat pull down, chest press. And when you're ready to stop, repeat. That's how we climb Olympia. When you push that extra rep, when you pull another set, when you lift that one last rep, you will climb the mountain and no one will forget. Bring on the build with the NASM Physique and Bodybuilding Coach Program. And thank you for joining this week's edition of the Master Instructor Roundtable. I'm Regional Master Instructor Marty Miller, here as always with fellow Regional Master Instructor and most importantly, dear friend, Miss Wendy Batts. Wendy, how are you doing today? I'm good, Marty. How are you? Great. As always, excited for this. You know, we're, we, in my opinion, we always come up with great topics. And I don't think this week is going to disappoint whatsoever. No, we are actually having a special guest on today. It's one of my favorite people that I've known for over 15 years. Guys, I've known him since he was just a little pup. And so I'm going to let Marty introduce him. And then Marty, let's bring him on. Absolutely. So this week, we're going to be speaking with Nathaniel Reach, who's a Paralympic runner and athlete for Team Canada, specializing in the 1500 meter. And really cool. Last year, Nate became a Paralympic champion at the 2021 Tokyo Paralympics. So Let's bring on Nate. We're going to dive into all the training and OPT model and all the above. Nate, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, thanks, Nate. And, you know, Nate, people that have listened to us on Random Fit, we um, had the honor of having you on when you won your gold medal, um, which is such a big deal. But you have such a very impactful and interesting story and so for those of um, our listeners that are, you know, never um, listened to Random Fit, first of all, you should. Um, but if you if you are part of our um, NASM family and don't know Nate, um, he was part of our Optima this year. Um, but Nate, can you tell our listeners a little bit about your story? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, like, like Wendy said, I've known her for a very long time and I uh, grew up in Chandler, Arizona. Uh, you know, that was a place where uh, I, I loved growing up, but also my life changed forever there. I was hit in the head by a golf ball and paralyzed uh, when I was 10 years old. And, um, you know, that was a moment for me that was uh, kind of a fork in the road. And, you know, you know, I could have not recovered and not worked hard or uh, work hard and, uh, you know, recover and still go chase those goals. And um, as Wendy knows, I have a very uh, passionate mother, very fiery mother who, I definitely wouldn't let me settle. And, um, you know, I've been on this, such this roller coaster, uh, but so much fun at the same time from you know, running in high school, then moving to Georgia, uh, running D, D1 in college, and then thinking that my career was done with. Um, and then finding the, para, the para, para, Paralympics, luckily enough, you know, setting a couple world records and winning a couple world titles and uh, landing myself in, in, in Tokyo. And, you know, looking back at that 10 year old self, uh, I, I don't think I thought that was possible, you know, paralyzed in a hospital bed, but uh, thankfully I had a lot of great people around me, like Wendy, uh, that uh, helped me get, that helped get me there. Wow. Shameless plug for Wendy. And I like how Nate, you just said a couple world titles, no biggie. <laughs> so, you know, I get it. You know, you're humble. I love it. But, you know, clearly you went through a lot of rehab, you know, to gain, regain your full function. You know, what do you attribute this process through? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I think there's really two two buckets. It's that family support uh, was amazing during uh, during that time. I think you know, I think my parents, my family was getting that Nate probably won't ever walk again. And, but they always told me, Nate, um, it's going to be really, really tough. You're going to struggle. There's going to be hard times, but you're going to overcome it. And then the second part was that's when I found the OPT model. Um, Dr. Clark and uh, Trevor Harrison, who's my uncle. Um, I most directly worked with Trevor um, pretty much my entire career. And uh, I still remember this is when he was just getting into things and he would put the CPT uh, or the C CES book on my stomach when he was giving me treatment. And uh, so I really, really dove into that, you know, formal stretch and, and activation. And 
um, you know, I saw what wonders it, it, it did for me. And honestly, like it's, it's a very complicated, you know, uh, whole model, but also it's very simple. Um, and so for me, I really just dove into formal stretching activating before I competed and then after formaling and, and, and stretching. And it's just uh, crazy how, you know, how much your recovery is impacted, soreness, and just you're able to uh, have a bigger load. And um, I've always been so interested in the OBT model. And so it was so fun when I was able to start my CPT and just get so much more knowledge. I love it. Plus, you really didn't have a choice, by the way. <laughs> All the people around you are like, this is it. So, but Nate, you know, when, you know, you, you win gold and you, you know, you're breaking records and you're doing all this stuff. I mean, when you said, it, you know, that you were paralyzed, you got hit in the head with a golf ball and literally lost all function. And then, you know, you were very right hand dominant before the accident. And then now you are obviously left handed. So really learning how to, you know, walk and write and do all the things that we take for granted. What do you have to do daily um, in order to prepare yourself for your training and, you know, your runs and get you ready for the competition? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, like, like when you said, so I have a hole in my head uh, in the in the motor strip, which controls the right side of my body. So, one thing we've really noticed is if I don't have great great sleep, my agility and balance is more affected than whatever you want to say a normal person uh, would be. So that's really where where it starts. And I don't. I don't think there's. I think there's been probably three or four runs that I've ever done without formally stretching before. Um, so I am very dedicated. Uh, we always joke that I have the world record for most corrective programs ever. Um, I've been doing that for the better part of 20 years. Um, and then, you know, after it, I do the same exact thing, um, foam roll and stretch, and I get a lot of treatment from my uncle and all of his employees at athlete health first, um, as well. And then there's a huge recovery component as, you know, athletes do i follow my whoop pretty religiously um especially for that uh, strain you know there's some days where it needs to be light some days where it, where where it needs to be um pretty heavy and i think that's something i've learned with the opt model as well because you know stability is such a component such an important com uh, component of my training um and it's you know not the most sexy thing uh to do you know it's really slow uh, long reps, pretty long workouts. And, um, and, but if you don't do that, if you don't lay that found foundation, then there's no way I would have got to Tokyo and been, and, and been healthy. So those are the really important things. And then of course, Nor uh, Norma Tech and Mark Pro are two of the modalities that I, that I use. Uh, Mark Pro is definitely my favorite, um, just cause you can use it almost anywhere on the airplane. Everyone gives me a very weird look whenever I pop that thing on and they, they're, they're confused if there's something wrong with me, which probably is. But, um, but yeah, those are kind of the most pivotal things that I use. Gotcha. So for those of you that are just joining myself, Marty Miller, on the Master Doctor Roundtable with my co-host, Miss Wendy Batts, we have a special guest today. We have Nathan Reach, who is a 2021 Tokyo Paralympic champion. And he's talking about everything that he's gone through, including how he uses the OPT model as part of that huge success he's seen. So Nate, can you kind of talk about what a, a week looks like of training? Now, obviously it depends on what time of year and when the next competition is, but for those people that are listening here who understand endurance and running, but you, can you kind of give us what a week of training would look like? So that way, you know, you don't overtrain and what, how you schedule things. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Monday is always my day off, which is Mondays I always really enjoy. But Mondays aren't just laying on the couch doing nothing. Um, I always start with a corrective program in the morning, followed by Norm Tech boots. And then I usually have some chill time. But then in the afternoon, I try and get uh, some type of blood flow going. Is that a walk? Is that jumping on the stationary bike? Um, and so I think that day is really important to really jumpstart my week. Tuesday is always my hardest session of the week and it's what we call anaerobic threshold it's about 75 80 to 85 percent of your max heart rate and so um we'll do anything from five times a mile to eight times a mile to a uh, thousand meters to 800s and that's usually around between five minute five flat mile pace and five 
520. So you'll start on the slower end and kind of work your way down. Wednesday um, is a double run day. So four miles in the morning, four miles in the afternoon. And after my session in, in the morning, I do a lift. And usually that's a stability workout. Um, I do pretty much, there's a lot of stability thrown in throughout the entire year. Uh, Thursday is a bit of a longer run, around 60 minutes. Um, Friday um, is a no, another double run with a lift. And um, if it's, you know, in the middle of the season, I'll have a, a strength workout where it's a strength exercise followed by a, a stability exercise uh, supersetted. Um, and so those are, those are my favorite workouts personally um, to do. And then Saturday is usually a bit quicker. So is that 200s or 400s at 500 race pace? So what my race pace will be, we usually do double double the actual volume of the actual race, or sometimes sometimes triple. And then Sunday is uh, our all favorite uh, Sunday long run, which can be anywhere from 10 to 16 miles. And that's kind of what my week looks like. Usually around 50 to 60 miles. I believe 55 is kind of my sweet spot. Um, that's where I like to be. And then if we're actually racing, it's more around 45 miles a week. Um, but the one thing that I personally love about the 500 meters is that I get to do everything. I get to do those, you know, half or half marathon steady runs. I get to do sprints on, on the turf field, uh, you know, 40 meter sprints on the track. I get to lift heavy. I get to do all the stability work. I get to do all the SAQ work if it's earlier in the season. And uh, so I really love that all encompassing training and, um, you know, and obviously it's so important to move in all different planes and that's what a lot of my lifts are. You know, most runners only try and use, you know, that one plane or sometimes two planes, but I like to move as much side to side and back and forth as I really can. And I think that's really important. And that's why I've been, you know, injury free for most of my career, which has been nice. It's like, Wendy, I think you should jump into this training since you guys live so close together, just you're ready. Oh, I think you're muted. So Wendy. Sorry about that. Um, yes. I'm, well, I can't say that I, I have never seen Nate work out. Um, yeah. I know exactly usually what he's doing um, yeah. because obviously we're very close with, with Trevor, his uncle that he's talking about. And when Trevor's out of town, um, Nate comes over. So, right. so it's always good to, to see him and hang out with him and his family as well. But but Nate, you know, you talked a little bit about your recovery and with all the mileage that you run, which is funny when you're like, you know, my sweet spot's 55 miles a week. It sounds so crazy for someone that's not a runner, such as myself. Um, so you, you mentioned the boots, you mentioned the Mark Pro, but, you know, on your when you say you're um, going through your recovery process, are those the two major modalities or what what is a recovery day or recovery session after these types of run look like? Yeah, no, so it's, it's, I, the sphere is by far my favorite, uh, thing to use by, uh, hyper So that's usually, I know a lot of people think of foam rolling as you just, you know, roll over the muscle, but you know, I hold that tight spot for 30 seconds. And a lot of times that rolling can take 45 minutes, um, because I get, I get really tight, uh, very easily, uh, because of my imbalances, uh, from my right side, I overuse my left side. Um, and, uh, you know, I try and get my feet as straight as possible, but they, they turn out, uh, when I'm trying to run fast. And, um, so yeah, there's definitely a lot of corrections that we have to make, you know, I mean, probably Trevor would tell you that he almost has to put me back together after those really hard workouts, um, post session. Um, and so, um, I usually try and get treatment at least once or twice a week. If, uh, if I, if I can, and, you know, after a lot of that neuromuscular stretching, something that uh, has really helped me uh, my left bicep fem gets really tight um and you know and i'm anterior rotated on the right side posterior on the left so um you know whenever i'm getting treated by someone who's not with athlete health first you know if they try and stretch my right hamstring i'm like no no no, no, no please don't do that please don't do that make sure my hips are even first um so it's you know it, it's funny the the things that i've picked up and um Every once in a while, I'll do a nice bath, but uh, really not too often. I just try and get that blood flow, which is uh, what what I what I understand is really the most important thing. And um, yeah, Normatec is definitely thirty minutes, um, but Mark Pro I can sometimes go up to two hours if I'm just doing some work or um, writing some emails or watching some of my si my sibling sports. Um, those are really important, and I think diet sometimes is over 
are uh, not as important as it really should be. Um, you know, I make, I try and eat as cleanly as I possibly can. And uh, I love Doc Fit supplements. Um, so I use that first string uh, post workout with, within 30 minutes. I think that's really important. Um, but yeah, I just try, like I said, I try and eat as healthy as I can. And um, sometimes I try to overeat in the preseason because, you know, I want to be a bit heavier. I don't want to get injured. Um, and uh, our physiologist always says if you if you undereat by a hundred hundred calories every day for a month, that's almost a full day of of, of eating. So um, you know it's it's really important to overfuel rather than underfuel, especially if you're um, a competitive athlete. You know, trying trying to get to the to the top of your game, and that's also some stuff that I've learned from taking my my CPT, and, and you know it's been. Uh, nice to re-emphasize those things that you know maybe I've heard five or six times, but uh, you know actually reading in a textbook that's evidence-based, you know, really hits home for me. Well, Nate, you you stole my next question, but so I'm going to kind of put a comma in there and ask you a follow-up. I was going to ask you about the nutrition because you know clearly you two, we're talking about everything kind of mechanical, what you do for the muscular system, the nervous system, but you need the fuel. So for all of our uh, amazing NESM family out there that's watching this, you know, we just came out with our certified nutrition coach not too long ago, but even since then, we now have our sport nutrition coach. And really, you are a perfect example of the difference between where somebody in the NASM family would really need to understand the difference and now have that extra level of knowledge with as much as you train. So I know that you're going through your CPT, but I could see a sport nutrition coach in your future, but do you monitor your calories? And if so, how many, and what about your hydration? Yeah, no, hydration is really important. Um, you know, I don't necessarily count the amount of ounces. Um, I personally love coffee, but my rule is always having two like bottles of water in the morning before I can actually have coffee. And, you know, I've, I don't, I haven't taken the uh, new the nutrition course with NASM yet, which I probably should. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times our nutritionist says to eat, uh, drink half of your weight in ounces. Um, but really, um, I think you know uh, when you go to the bathroom, a lot of times you can really see if you're dehydrated or hydrated. Um, I get drug tested quite a bit as well, so um, you know you'll know from those values if you're uh, you're underhydrated. Electrolytes super important. Um, especially if you're, you know, endurance sport, well, any sport, but endurance sport, especially I, I, I can notice if, if I'm dehydrated, that my, uh, heart rate is, gets a lot higher than it would if I, if I was normally hydrated. Um, so that's, that's really important for me. Um, and calorie wise, I do not count calories. I would assume it's around 4,000 calories a day. Um, lots of carbs for sure. For me, um, oatmeal is, one of my favorite meals. So I get a lot of that. And, uh, and as when he's been over at our house plenty of times, we definitely have a lot of steak dinners, um, to make sure I get that iron in. And also, you know, that multivitamin and, and, uh, and fish oils are really important. I think fish oils for me, just cause I have a hole in my head and always was super, um, conscious of my brain health. Um, and so that's something that uh, I've maybe been more conscious than maybe some, some of my teammates in that certain, uh, area. Um, but I think it's, you know, if, if you eat all the right things and I think it's okay to, you know, have some of those sweets here and there. And I think, you know, when you get super, 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 super strict, you know, some problems can come from that as well. Obviously there's a time and place for everything. Um, but those are kind of the rules that I follow. Love it. <laughs> you know, Nate, when it's interesting when you listen to yourself talk, cause you're like, you know, I have a hole in my head, like it's no big deal. I mean, the thing that, I mean, for those of you guys, like I'm telling you, you have to listen to his entire story. It's phenomenal to see what this, this, um, I call you a young man, Nate, because I don't want to feel old, but, um, you know, you've talked so much about, you know, using the OPT model, your entire career, um, basically since you were 10 going through rehab, doing the corrective exercise, and when you're talking about Trevor doing the manual therapy, basically Trevor's on the corrective exercise continuum. But instead of doing some of the, the foam rolling, he's actually going in and manually uh, emphasizing and working on the overactive muscles in order to help realign Nate before he gets into his activation work. But, you know, I mean, I know that's a huge component, obviously, to get your body feeling well. But on the strength side, you know, you talk about that you do stabilization a lot while you're, you know, in season. 
But, you know, can you kind of walk us through when you're not in season or if, if that's even a thing with your races and the way that your schedule is, do you ever get yourself up to power? Like, do you do you work yourself up and then undulate throughout the, the phases? Like, how does how does that work for you? Yeah, definitely. That is actually one of the things that I I learned through through this through the CPT. Um, you know, everyone talks about the linear and the undulating programs. And, you know, we're definitely a bit more linear in the pre in, in the preseason and we undulate more during the, the competitive season. And actually the power has been a huge, huge component for me because a lot of times if we do that overspeed on, on the track, there's just too much wear and tear uh, on my hamstring. When I lived up in uh, Canada, our track was only six lanes. So the corners were a, a bit tighter and it just didn't make a whole lot of sense for me to just out there ripping as hard as I can. And so we did a lot of met ball power um, in the weight room and uh, it really showed because I was able to run almost my personal best really early in the season that we hadn't even touched that that fast stuff which I think really showed uh, how how important that's that stuff is and personally it's who doesn't love throwing something really hard against the wall I mean that's uh, that's so much fun and um, you know like I said I think there's a time and place for that as well and uh, SAQ kind of you know we, uh, speed ladder has always been one of my favorite things uh, to do as well. And, and so those are the things that I uh, really follow. And, you know, I, when we do strength, I do have to be careful sometimes as well. Like there's no, like over, no squats usually maybe with the Swiss ball. Um, but um, with my lack of range of motion in my internal external rotation and my 90, 90 hamstring, um, you know, a lot of times we just don't throw those in. Um, so, uh, a lot of heavy step ups is definitely my favorite, uh, to do. And like I said, you know, lateral, uh, lunges, um, as, as well as a lot of upper body stuff, which, uh, probably by looking at me, you don't think I do a lot of upper body stuff, but, um, you know, have to, you know, one of my sizes is a, a little bit smaller than the other. So try to equal that out as much as you can, but at the end of the race, you go to your arms quite a bit. And so trying to make sure that those are, uh, strong as well. Yeah, you know, you just want to look good when you have to get into your little uh, your little outfit to run. So <laughs> I know you better than that. But Nate, I actually have a follow up. And this is just out of curiosity, like when you're working with your coaches and, you know, and working with the, the people that are, are writing your programs, um, this is kind of a two, two question. Like when you're running, do you ever run the opposite way? Um, just to kind of balance out, because obviously, if you're always kind of leaning left when you're going in, in that, you know, following the track. Or, um, so that's question number one. And then question number two, has anyone ever asked you like what you're doing or do they already know, like your coaches know what type of workouts you're doing and, and they're good with it? Yeah, for sure. So one, um, for the, my longer workouts, um, a lot of times the longer workouts are actually more on trails. Um, but if for some reason we're doing mile reps on the track, hundred percent, we'll go both ways. Sometimes even more the opposite way. Um, when we're doing really fast stuff, I don't like to switch very often because I don't like the feeling of learning how to run fast the op the opposite way. It just I don't know. It just feels really weird to me. Um, so yeah, the, that's uh, that's kind of uh, that question. But and then uh, as for my coaches, my coach Heather, who I've been under since 2018, she's the first coach that really wanted to understand what I did off the track, um, which has been really fun. Um, you know, Trevor got to come to Gifu Japan at our, at our pre-camp and she, you know, sat down with Trevor four or five times throughout the year to really understand what we're doing. Um, and then, uh, Trevor puts together all the, uh, results from my treatments, the, the treatment, the treatment, re uh, reports. And, um, they think it's awesome. Um, and Trevor worked with some of the other athletes and they had some pretty awesome performances, um, one being Greg Stewart, who ended up throwing the, par the Paralympic record in the shot put and I mean, one of his best performances. And he definitely said that, uh, you know, it's funny when you have uh, internal external rotation and trying to be powerful. Uh, you know, it's funny the things that you can do when you actually have that optimal range of motion. But that has been a struggle for most my entire my entire career because in running it's so much like let's run 100 miles a week, let's do traditional lifts. And just for me, that just does not get the job done. Um, you know, I, my movement quality is so much more important than that little bit of strength or power I'm going to get from those, those exercises. So, uh, you know, for me, it, it's now 
with working on my CPT, I'm able to explain it a bit better to my coach as well. And uh, like I said, Heather is so much on board and um, yeah, she almost doesn't even ask anymore. She's like, Hey, I know that you and Trevor are doing the right thing. Here's your races. Make sure that you're lining, you know, all the phases up with, with, uh, with your racing, but you know, it's uh, not very stressful, but it has been pretty stressful in the past with uh, my college coaches. For those of you just joining us right now, we're having a, amazing conversation with a very special guest here on the master truck round table. I'm Marty Miller. And as always with Wendy bats, we have Nate reach who is a 2021 Paralympic champion. And we're talking all things NASM OPT model, his amazing story. So Nate, you're very motivating and I'm excited to see, you know, you keep talking about taking your CPT. So What's your timeline to finish roughly? And where do you see yourself in the future utilizing that? Is this just for yourself or are you going to kind of cross into this industry and start working on people as well? Yeah, no, I, uh, hopefully in the next couple of months I'll be finished with it. Um, maybe I think six to eight to eight weeks is kind of what I'm giving myself. I'm going out to Victoria, British Columbia here for a uh, conference and a little bit of training. So um, that'll break up some of the some of the uh, you know work that I'll be doing. Um, I would love to be in the industry. I don't know if uh, the actual treatment side will be where I lay. Um, you know, I think with my knowledge with endurance, and then also hopefully uh, getting a couple degrees with the NASM or a couple certifications. Um, I would love to kind of put both of those to the test, um, and really just finding athletes that really want to work hard. I mean, I think that that's what I'm really passionate about, and really the reason why I got it, got into it is because in college, all of my teammates would always come to me and ask me, you know, why they were more prone to injury. And I wasn't injured, even though that my imbalances were greater than theirs. And a lot of times I would, you know, take a video of them doing the overhead squat, single leg squat, from, uh, di uh, different angles. It's under, over the Trevor. And I always was so intrigued and sometimes confused about where he got this corrective program, this magical corrective program from just those two videos that I sent him. Um, and so that was one thing I felt like I just had such superficial knowledge of a lot of stuff, but not really deep knowledge of really anything. And so that's really what I was super interested in, you know, learning more about the muscles that aren't tight on me, you know, that are tight on other people. Cause that's how I know, you know, the bicep fem TFL, I, how I know those muscles so well is just because that's what's really tight on me, but you know, I don't always have the same movement patterns as other people. And, um, and so that's kind of where my interest came. And, um, you know, I have some great people in Atlanta, Georgia, being my uncle, Wendy, Tony, um, that I can shadow and really learn from. Um, and, uh, I would love it if that ended up lining up, uh, after my career is done with. Well, Nate, I'm sure I can probably make that happen. You know, again, you don't live quite, you don't live very far from me and, uh, and you know where to find us for sure. Cause we're always just a phone call away, but um, you know, you, you actually got to present at Optima this year. You, you know, we're telling some stuff ab about yourself, but can you tell those that maybe have missed Optima? Can you let us know a little bit about your session? Because those that have signed up, we still have time. If people want to go back and miss you the first time, they can go back and listen to it again. Yeah, absolutely. It was so much fun. It was honestly a bucket list thing for me. Um, you know, with my uh, stepdad, Ben Tucker, working for NASM uh, when I was pretty little to, you know, Trevor and all of you guys. And so um, I had always seen uh, Optima, seen videos of certain speakers and always really wanted to be a part of it. I didn't know if it would be on the stage or just behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, when I got the email about having that opportunity, I was so excited and um, really I, I shared kind of two buckets. The first bucket of kind of where I come from, what, uh, what happened to me during my brain injury and then how I recovered. Because for me, it wasn't, you know, I wanted to compete on that top, top of, but it wasn't matter if I knew I was going to get there. I just had to figure out how I was going to get there. And obviously from this conversation, the OBT model played such a huge role in that. And so I, I shared a lot of, uh, you know, the, the things that I found helpful. And a lot of times people just try and make it so complicated. Um, and really, uh, a lot of it is simple. Um, and so, you know, I just follow the same routine almost, I mean, day in and day out, and I do it every day. And, uh, you know, there's nothing super sexy about it. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it landed me on top of the podium. And, uh, you know, one of the most 
proudest moments that I've had uh, so far in my life. I love it. Well, Nate, I actually have a piggyback to that. So those um, that don't know anything about your your family, your your mom, your dad, your grandfather, um, your uncle. Uh, so, you know, you, if you want to give a, like a brief little um, kind of background story about each one of those and then thinking about where you are today. I mean, did you ever feel pressure like, OK, yes, this happened to me, but I need to be at this level. Like, can you tell us a little bit about that before we uh, we wrap up? Definitely, yeah. So my mom um, was a Canadian national champion in the pole vault, uh, 2000 Olympic trials champion, and was in, at the Commonwealth Games in 2002. My biological dad was an Olympian in 1996. Uh, he was the uh, collegiate record holder in the NCAA for the javelin. Um, my stepmom, Lisa, um, she was a finalist in uh, the high jump at USA's. Uh, my stepdad, Ben Ben Tucker uh, played professional baseball and went to the College World Series while at USC. My grandpa, who's probably the famous, most famous out of all of us, um, you know, played uh, NHL hockey, played with Wayne Gretzky and Bobby Orr, played for the Bruins, Blackhawks, Maple Leafs, and a couple more teams. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he had uh, scored 10 points in one game and three goals in 24 seconds. Um, so that was, that was pretty cool. Uh, Uncle Trevor played professional rugby um, uncle brad who also worked for nasm um, played professional baseball in the phillies organization um, and one of my cousins was got fit at the olympics in the 400 hurdles so and i grew up in a majority in that environment which was so cool and uh, i think so many times um, people put pressure on their kids to be be successful i just have to really harp on hard work and uh, you know, fortunately, I didn't. They didn't have to do any of that. Number one, I saw their hard work day in and day out, which is really cool. And I think one thing that's you know not as common in in today's culture is having such creativity when it comes to sport. A lot of times, kids are just so structured and are in these club programs and, and these travel programs. And uh, for from my parents, they just let me be as creative as I wanted to, throwing the tennis ball against the wall for hours, acting like I was in the World Series, playing shortstop, throwing mm -hmm. someone out at, at, at first base. And now when I train, I think I'm in the Paralympic final and, you know, practice that last 100 meters that I'm going to need if I want to repeat in, uh, in uh, 24. And so I think that creativity goes a really long way, and that's just something that I don't see as much today. Makes sense. Well, Nate, I think, I mean, your story is so motivating and clearly you come from a great lineage of athletes, but as I've been sitting here listening to your story, you know, clearly you are able to motivate so many people that have gone through similar situations, but I think there's a carryover to people who just maybe self-limit with the fear of getting in shape and training and <clears throat> maybe they have some other uh, issues that they're dealing with more from, you know, just being afraid of working out, et cetera. So as we wrap up, do you have any final kind of advice for, you know, when you're, whatever that is for you, when you're facing some adversity, you know, how do you push through? Like, do you have any words of advice for someone who's gone through what you did that could carry over to just even our general population? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, a lot of times people um, try and make my story as this really, really special thing. But at the end of the day, uh, there's so many connections to all of us. I mean, we just went through COVID one day, everything was normal. And the next day, everything was you know, crazy to cancer, divorce, all these things, um, you know, are really similar to my injury. And uh, for me, I, I'm, I'm a big dreamer for sure. And, uh, you know, it was really important that I still had those big dreams, but you also have to have those small, those small wins. And that's one thing that my parents have really taught me is that you have to have those celebrate those really small wins. And, um, and I think in fitness, getting in shape, it's going to take, you know, oh, a chunk of time. Like for me, I take two and a half weeks to three weeks off at the end of the season. And the first six weeks of training just sucks. It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm running 25 minutes and I'm gas. And I'm like, what? I just ran, you know, like four weeks ago, I just ran 16 miles at 550 mile pace and felt so easy. And now I can barely get through a 20 minute run. So, you know, it's, it really takes process um, and really just find something that you can really stick to you know, don't try and do seven days a week if you can't keep doing that. Um, even if it's just three days a week, that's totally fine if that's getting in the weight room, if that's running. And a lot of times, you know, if you're interested in endurance, you know, start start with walk walk jogs or just walking to build that endurance. And then, you know, slowly <laughs> build your way 
So that's the worst thing you can do is just jump into it with, with both feet and then you get injured or, and then by getting injured or really sore, you just, it's just not fun. Um, and really just find something, uh, you know, that's really fun when it comes to the fitness sphere. Awesome. That's great advice. I really appreciate you, you know, kind of making that to where everybody's going to have their obstacles and, you know, there's a way to get through it. So thank you so much. So Wendy, any last comments, questions before we wrap this amazing session up today? No, Nate, I just appreciate you. I appreciate your story, your, your, just your passion, everything that you're doing. And I'm excited that, you know, you're going to be part of the NASM CPT family very soon. And uh, I just really appreciate your time because I know you're extremely busy. Oh, any, anytime. This is, you know, always so much fun for me. You know, a lot of times I get to talk about the actual just running part. And it's so cool to come on here and, you know, learn from you guys and also share some of the things that, that uh, I've learned. And, uh, you know, I love the NASM family, that's for sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, we love you as well. So Nate, thank you so much. And thank you for all of you that joined in today. And we look forward to seeing you next week on the Master Instructor Roundtable.